Thanks for the introduction, Beth. So like she said, my name's Cecile Grubb and I work um, for the engineering department up at Western Washington University. Um, I don't know that all of you know that much about Western Washington University. Uh, we're up in Bellingham, Washington, up in the top left corner of the state. Um, our engineering program is undergraduate only. We've got five different tracks in plastics and composites engineering, manufacturing engineering, electrical engineering, vehicle design, and industrial design. Um, and I work for the plastics and composites uh, program. And we've got some curriculum in advanced composite composites, thermoplastics, polymer chemistry, materials characterization, manufacturing, and just a bunch of stuff that's really important to the aerospace industry. And one thing that we're really, really proud of at Western is um, our primarily industry-sponsored research. So we like to talk a lot about how we have real-world hands-on problems for our students. Um, and I'll go into that a little bit later when I talk about the research problem we worked on. Uh, but first, a company that you probably are more familiar with than Western, which is Zodiac Aerospace. Um, they're a world leader in aerospace equipment and systems um, for commercial, regional, and uh, business aircraft. We work um, mainly with their uh, Washington branches and some of their California branches, um, but they've got 100 locations worldwide and 35,000 uh, employees. So they're uh, pretty important to the aerospace industry, but they're also really important to us because they employ a lot of Western grads, not only um, from my program, from the, but from the manufacturing program um, as well. So a little about our partnership. We started working with Zodiac back in uh, 2012, which coincidentally was when Jakati was just starting up. So uh, the first project that we did with Zodiac was investi investigating a problem they were having with composite panel warpage. And that was uh, the first grant that we received from Jakati. Uh, we've started working on some different st stuff since then, which is mainly focused on developing new materials for the uh, aerospace interiors industry. Um, but we've been very grateful to Jakati for the support from 2012 and onwards. Um, a little bit about the partnership. We, I think both of us, both of the groups would say that the partnership is really mutually beneficial. Zodiac gets access to facilities and expertise in areas that they don't otherwise have access to and lets them do a really wide range of research. Um, well, we're really grateful for the opportunities to provide our students with a more comprehensive education and, like I said, access to real-world problems for senior project capstones, but for uh, research projects that involve students from the sophomore level onwards. So, specifically the problem that I'd like to talk about today that we, um, uh, that's involved with transitioning technology to industry was um, solving this problem for Zodiac, which was that they needed to qualify a new material supplier for phenolic prepreg, which for those of you who aren't familiar with prepreg, it's a um, fabric that's been pre-coated with uh, a thermosetting resin. So they had completed standard quality control tests like resin content, volatile content, resin flow, and a host of um, mechanical testing methods. But they really needed to know more about how the degree of cure of the two materials compared. And to understand why that's important, I want to talk a little bit about the prepreg manufacturing process, which uh, really happens in three stages. The first stage, or the A stage, is where the fabric is coated with the thermosetting resin. Um, and you can see that all the way on the left. Uh, after that, it's heated in an oven system. And B stage, um, or partially cured or partially cross-linked, at which point it's prepreg. And the degree of cure um, at this stage is really important to the final stage, um, which is the composite parts that you find in your aircraft, because it, it affects how the material molds and the mechanical properties and the physical properties of the final part. So um, like some of you probably know, there's a standard method for measuring degree of cure, which is using differential scanning calorimetry. Uh, it's the ASTM method, and it works really well for things like epoxies. Um, so DSC measures the heat flow of a material over a range of temperatures. And if you integrate the temperatures, or the heat flow while a material is curing, you can uh, in infer a degree of cure from that material. And so you can see the standard DSC results for an epoxy or that sort of resin on the right. 
Um, you can see what the DSC of phenolic resin looks like on the left, and it is not very pretty, and it's hard to integrate, and um, it really doesn't work. Uh, so using knowledge that we'd gained all the way back to 2012, we came up with a new approach, um, which involved manufacturing uh, prepreg out western using our laboratory skill uh, prepreg treater, um, which we built using Zodiac and Jakati funding. Um, and we used it to manufacture prepreg at a variety of temperatures to get a variety of different levels of cure. And then we investigated the level of cure using um, a bunch of different methods, including some specialized DSC, uh, DMA, and uh, gel permeation chromatography. Um, so. Uh, the solution that we came up with was, with was using gel permeation chromatography, which allows you to analyze the molecular weight of a polymeric material. And what's cool about this is that unlike DSC, it's applicable to pretty much any commercial resin system, including solvent-based systems like phenolic. Uh, what else is cool is that Zodiac has GPCs, so they were able to take this method that we have developed and um, implement it immediately just using the procedures that we came up with. Um, so we were pretty proud of that. and. One thing that's cool is that we were able to do this over the course of three months. So Zodiac came to us with the problem, we worked on it for summer, and by the end of the summer we had a solution. And um, I guess I meant to talk about this more on the next slide too. Uh, so uh, not only did we come up with a solution for Zodiac, but it allowed us to better qualify the research uh, machine that we built. Um, which has been really beneficial to us going forward with our research. Uh, so to kind of wrap this up, I'd like to talk about what I think the benefits of the Jakati partnership are. Um, so like I mentioned before, our students get this, uh, get access to these really cool projects that let them uh, interface with industry professionals. And it's really cool to see the ones who start as sophomores um, or juniors grow throughout their uh, education and become much better at presenting and at um, the soft skills that engineers don't always get. Uh, for us, it's really, the Ducati program has really improved our uh, connections with Zodiac um, and it, because it, allowing us to leverage both those funding sources has just allowed us to do a lot more research. Um, and then for Zodiac, uh, this, this program has allowed us to do research in a lot of areas that we wouldn't have been able to otherwise. And like I was saying before, it's really decreased the amount of time that it takes us to solve these problems. So three months without Jakati's funding would have been uh, multiple years because we wouldn't have had the pre-preg treater or that equipment that we were using to um, analyze the material. So finally, I'd like to acknowledge a handful of people um, who are some of which are in this room. Uh, at Western, uh, Nikki Larson, Mark Perrin, and John Masasi, as well as students, Mark Seeley, Gunnar Linskog, and David Peebles. At Zodiac Aerospace, uh, Jim Del Pinto has been um, extremely helpful to us over the years, as well as Kevin Bassard and Kevin Korf. And last but not least, I'd really like to give a shout out to Beth Hacker for keeping the Jakati program alive and prospering. So thank you.